Okay, I've started the recording and we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so welcome everybody. Thanks for joining the call and um, uh, I'm Tricia. For any of you who don't know me, I'm at the University of Virginia and uh, it's been a while since I've facilitated a call, but I'm delighted to be doing so. Um, we have on our agenda today, we've got some project updates and then Leela Marshall, also from the University of Virginia, is going to give us a demo on the Panopto Lecture Capture tool. And uh, we will then spend, after that, we'll spend some time uh, talking about future topics and getting some things on the schedule and then wrap up. So I've pasted the Etherpad link. If folks could um, follow that to go ahead and, and sign into the meeting notes page when you get a chance. And I'm going to, I guess, Neil, I'm going to turn it over to you now for some updates. Thanks, Tricia. Um, yeah, uh, I'll just go down a list here and other folks can, can chime in. Um, so Sakai 11 uh, is moving along. My gut feeling is we can we can make a May release, but I am struggling to figure out exactly how we do that because we're um, we're probably three or four weeks out from maybe needing an RCO one. And while we've had a great testing effort, I'm not you know sure exactly what pieces we need. Um, there are certainly encouraging signs because there are several institutions that are committed seem committed to adopting by May. And um, there's also an effort to use Sakai Virtual Conference Funds to help with uh, Morpheus, which I think would be a huge part of getting the release out. So I have some optimism, but I've been struggling exactly on what to tell the community exactly about about the upgrade because I've been getting some questions about it. Um, so I'm going to look at look at the Q, you know, for the QA group to help help me figure that out, and maybe the core team and and think about it a little bit more, but. So I'm still kind of optimistic about a May release based on the commitment of the community, but we are on a tight timeline and we'll really need people to step up to make it happen. So that's kind of my summary of, of Sakai 11. Um, and, um, Sakai QA, I'm not sure I'm the best person to do the, you know, that summary, but I thought I'd mention that you know, it is going pretty well and we're talking about all the different pieces that need to be done and there's good progress being made. I just don't have my head wrapped around exactly the progress. So I don't know if there's anyone on the QA team who's on the call and would have a better, more specific update. Um, I think that there's been a tremendously good um, effort in terms of organizing the activities and um, you know, having people you know, both for the Morpheus testing and for the and for the regressions, but again, just don't have my head wrapped around like how much we have exactly completed and how much is, is left to be done. So I think that's an activity we need to do to really make sure we can um, do a May release. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my thinking at the moment, and I'm not sure if other people have comments or ideas on that. Right. Um, yeah, I see NYU is on the call. I'm not sure, and they are in listen-only mode. Um, if any of them do have audio to talk, that Jeff or Kyle possibly, maybe not. Uh, oh, that's Rob. Hi, Rob. Okay. Um, Hi, so that's this is Wilma. I just wanted to pipe in real quick, um, just to kind of tag on to some of what. Neil had mentioned about um, some of the stuff for Sakai 11. We are right now in the process of getting signatures uh, with uh, University of Marthia to free up more developer time to work on Morpheus. So that's well in the works and hopefully um, we can speed up that effort very soon. Um, another announcement is just kind of related to the help documentation. Um, as Neil mentioned, we're kind of in a push to get QA done and a lot of um, some of the, the Morpheus things kind of need to be fixed before we can fix some of the, the screen captures in the documentation. So we've been working on the documentation. It's going along pretty well, but if anybody is interested in helping, um, please let me know as soon as possible because if we um, if we want to get that May release out, we need to have um, you know the documentation packaged with it. So um, we probably won't have the complete help um, documentation update ready by the release candidate one. 
um, which would be early May, um, but uh, probably short, or actually, when did you say uh, RC1 would be out, Neil? I might be getting my dates mixed up. Um, I'm, you know, we talked on a QA call um, about getting it out uh, by April 8th, which would be about three weeks. Okay, yeah. Which seems a little, yeah. So a little, we, little tight to me, but. Yeah. Um, for the help docs, I know we won't be able to make that deadline, but probably by the end of April, we could probably have a good um, update for the majority of the, the help documentation. So right now I'm shooting for end of April to be um, pretty much done with the help docs. So again, if you're interested in helping or if you're already on the team that's helping to update, um, you know, we, we've got our work cut out for us in the next few weeks, but I think it's doable. Thanks, Wilma. That's good. And if anybody on the call um, wants to reach out to Wilma about contributing, I don't know, Wilma, you want to paste your email address in the chat and I'll also put it in the meeting notes. Thanks. Okay. Um, let's see, did you want to move on to Sakai 107, Neil? Yeah, I'll, okay. um, I sent out an email that Sakai 107 is gonna, should be, we have an art, should have a release candidate and we'll probably only have one release candidate hopefully for that. Um, you know, late this week or early next week, and, um, and I'll need some QA help because most community is focused on 11. And um, I, I sent out an email to the community with details about the release and what's in it. So, um, okay. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's Sakai 10.7. You know, it's a relatively small release, but it has, you know, obviously some good, a couple, two security fixes, and I think it was 30 seven issues fixed and so it's you know it's it's a significant uh release and it was important because of uh some of those fixes blocker fixes yeah um so people who are who are planning on staying on 10 set on 10 for a while i strongly encourage you to contact me directly and help with the testing i don't think it'll be a ton of testing but we could use you know a few testers to knock it out Do you want to move on to badges? Yeah, badges. I put a link there. I think uh, we don't have to go over it again, but uh, we added in, thanks to Wilma and uh, uh, Hodges and Jeff Pash, uh, maybe Kyle, I'm not sure, behind the scenes, he might have been helping there too. We uh, added in the how, how many tasks did you complete so you can put in like, you know, 10 tasks at a time so you don't have to put in one. So I think we're ready to launch it. <laughs> I think it's ready to go. Oh, and boy. people can start, uh, you know, reporting um, their, uh, you know, reporting their, their QA mm -hmm. effort and, and earning badge, uh, badge points. So you have an announcement that you're going to send out about this to the community? That's a good idea. Hey. <laughs> Why not do that? Oh, <laughs> an idea. Yeah. I can go home now. I'm, I'm, that's my good idea for today. <laughs> <laughs> one, one day that's all you need to come up with cool it's not yeah, bad. that's my quota <laughs> is that over is that per week or per day uh that's per day i you know i'm pretty um I, i'm an overachiever <laughs> <laughs> okay um great uh, so the, the last thing i'll mention is uh gradebook ng which there was a sakai core team really good sakai core team call last uh yesterday evening we covered a lot of um a lot of stuff, including you know, process for for QA and and things like that. And one of the things that came up with Gradebook NG was that it sounded like they uh, were going to get their uh, you know their final features um, merged in like the next week or so Ooh. into into master. So that's what I heard anyway. Um, so correct me if yeah. I'm wrong. Anyone who's on the call who heard differently, but that's what I remember hearing from yesterday. I was it was tired. I was a little tired. It was the end of the day, but. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's ex very exciting. I hope that it does um, happen in the next week or so. That that would be great. Very exciting. Well, thank you, Neil. Thanks for all those updates. And Wilma, anybody else have any updates um, to share? I know the 
marketing me uh, group also met last week. I don't know if you guys have anything you want to talk about today. Um, am, I, am I a mute or let's see? Oh, yeah, I'm not a mute. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, we're still making progress. I mean, obviously, there's so much going on. Uh, there's there's challenges in terms of just bandwidth, um, but we have submitted some requirements to uh, um, Ian Dolphin, who kind of controls the management of the Aperio and Sakai websites, and we submitted some um, mockups and some requirements to him. So he's forwarded them forwarded them on to um, the developer. To get uh, to get some estimates on getting those that work done, and also I believe Trisha, you, me, and Matt, we're going to work on a, a press release. Right. And um, I was going to look into, uh, and I forgot to mention this to uh, to a couple people, but yeah, also thinking about I've had some some good input on ideas for developing relationships with the press, and I'll see if I can make some progress on that. But it's a little tight. Um, yeah. Um, so I think that's the main thing. And, and also helping um, existing institutions. There's an existing institution that is about to go through an LMS um, process, an LMS, LMS evaluation process. And I think it would be really great if we can find a way to support that institution. So we're looking into that because if we could make, to me, that would be a huge impact. If somehow we can, I think, Tricia, it may have been your idea of having a, like, um, a speakers bureau or yeah. whatever you want to call it, where yeah. we can something. kind of come mm -hmm. something where we can come have community members come and help, you know, help mm -hmm. with, with those types of things with other institutions that are going through those processes. So I think that would be a huge thing. So that's something else we're, we're looking at. And we have an actual specific institution that uses canvas and they have multiple campuses and use other LMSs as well. And they're going through this whole LMS evaluation process. So. Yeah, that, it would be great if we could get a speakers bureau, um, for lack of a better title, um, organized and get some folks to volunteer to to do that. Whether it's just doing a recording that you share with other institutions, you know, that you can make available, or um, meeting remotely with decision makers at at institutions who are evaluating LMSs, or or even visiting if they're nearby. Um, so the, a food for thought for any of you who um, might might consider doing that or know of someone who, who might consider participating in that. Okay, anything else before we move on? to our uh, main speaker today. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Leela Marshall. She's um, our classrooms manager here at the University of Virginia. And Leela brought Panopto to UVA, um, which is a le lecture capture tool. And we have an integration, an LTI integration into our instance of Sakai. Um, at uh, the University of Virginia. And uh, so Leela has graciously agreed, even though she's a brand new grandmother, um, to uh, spend some time with us this morning to give us a, a demo and answer our questions about it. So Leela, let me make sure you still, uh, I need to give you, um, do you want presenter privileges on your Mac? Or I you uh, hi everyone, this is Leela. Um, <laughs> So what has been happening while y'all have been graciously spending time talking is that I completely <laughs> lost my Panopto, but it is back. So do it. Uh, I believe I've finally gotten back. So the PC, please. Okay, the PC. I see it. Oh. So. <laughs> For this entire time, I uh, was trying to mess with my video settings and <laughs> lost my Panopto recorder. And, oh. and, it, and it has been gone. And I have been feverishly trying to get it back, but I believe I have it oh. back. So, Hope um, we gave you just enough time to do hi that. Everyone. <laughs> <clears throat> hi everyone. Hi, Leela. So go ahead and start sharing oh. your screen when as whenever you're oh, okay. ready. Okay, I can do that. So um, first of all, I would love to get an idea of how many of you guys are actually already using Panopto, so that I know you know how to tailor this. This uh, it's not a it's not a presentation; it's a discussion. Okay. So um, that's yeah, and that's where and we people go from here. 
So Duke is using it. Cool. Oxford, four of us on this call. Excellent. Okay. And, and so for some, it's their first look. NYU is using it. Okay. Providence College is so interested have, in it. So we have a good mix. Yeah, we have a mix. Okay, so let me give you just a, a second's worth of background. Um, my job here at UVA is to um, provide AV in the classrooms. So, uh, and the support used to be part of my job, but uh, someone else has graciously shared my job with me so that we can continue to move forward. Um, <clears throat> the um, Several years ago, probably in 2007, I quickly saw the need for some sort of uh, desktop recording for the classroom. Uh, the first reason was for the bird flu, actually. Uh, everybody was afraid that, you know, we would have this pandemic in America and, and things would stop. Uh, and then as time went on, it was not just for emergencies, but for the way people are learning now and the change in learning. So that's that's where where this all came from. And a lot of the hardware-based uh, recording options were out there, but they were very, very expensive. And I had, at that time, maybe 120 rooms that I was taking care of, and I knew that I couldn't afford to put a hardware-based uh, recording device in each room. So we started looking for software-based uh, solutions. And this one was actually the first one uh, on the market uh, that would allow for more than one camera and would, um, you know, it was just affordable. It was actually free when I started, but that's not the case anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, can, can everybody see my desktop? Yes. Yes, okay, because I have no idea what we're looking at. Hi, that's me. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me see if I can uh, get up a copy. So we have, um, The, the product is, is um, similar to many of the other recording solutions. It was developed by, um, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> Carnegie Mellon, <laughs> and, and mostly working with the physics department. Um, but now it's branched out to its own, its own beautiful uh, enterprise, and, and personally, I just love the product. Um, we have tried both hosted and non-hosted versions, and uh, I think they're both fine. I just find that with the hosted version, I spend less time trying to s solve problems. Um, and since mm -hmm. the um, – I had all this set up already, and then I lost my, my desktop, so pardon me. That's okay. <sighs> I, I can't hear anybody else, so I'm kind of, kind of. Can you hear me, Linda? I can hear you, but they're 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 being quiet. I'm used they're to being quiet, quiet. <laughs> and 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 that's okay. Okay. So this is what our site looks like. Uh, I'm in administrator mode, so I can see a lot more than a lot of people, but but everybody will be able to see uh, any of the sessions that are public or sometimes you can share them just for other people at UVA. Um, and here is here is actually, you know, a class that was done yesterday. And this is what the product looks like when it's being recorded, after it's been recorded. And you can, this area right here, can you see my mouse? Um, so I, I have to hold a button you to might the need to maximize your your window that you're in okay and and it? there is there is a delay for the screen drawing through the through the okay. um, big through blue the, button so okay all right so this is a this is a window of of a actually recorded screen and you have several areas and we'll go through how to record in just a minute but i wanted to show you the final product we have the camera area on the left at the top and you see the gentleman drawing graphs here. And then there's a, a notes and discussion part that will be filled out based uh, differently based on how you do your actual um, 
recording. If you have a PowerPoint, every sli every slide has a shortcut there. Um, you can create shortcuts after the fact based on what you're doing. Um, you can show your desktop or a PowerPoint. Um, if you if you use a white PowerPoint slide, you can ink or a document camera that comes through the web through the UPC. For the Mac, you can you know draw on a document camera. You can show multiple cameras. Um, this area here is the presentation or the or the desktop. There's some. And Leila, mm -hmm. just remember that we're when you are pointing at something with your mouse, we're not seeing that right away. Okay. Do so. I have to hold a button down or something to get that red uh, arrow for the? How do I get the red arrow and the blue button? <laughs> Do you I can have... no. Sorry, I don't. Okay, so uh -uh. we'll just talk talk through it. On the far right screen, far right of the screen, you can make this area larger by clicking that, and you will get a full screen of your um, desktop. And then this is, and then at the bottom, you can navigate to different screens through the bottom here with your slide slideshow. You can click okay. immediately and it will go with the audio and the video directly to that area. Uh, you also have multiple speeds that you can play back at. You can go down to 0.5 down at the right hand corner now, uh, all the way up to two times the speed for playback. Um, you can hide this area to make this portion a little bigger. So you can hide the bottom right area to make the screen a little bit bigger. Or you can um, double click on any of the areas. So I'm going to double click on the camera picture and it will enlarge that. So if you just have a presenter that's really talking, you can, you can show this or you can actually not even uh, record you don't have to record your screen. You can just record the video and the audio if you want more of a presentation with a speaker. Please write in the chat if you have a question. I'm I'm feeling a little weird with not having any feedback from anybody. I'm not a teacher either. So right now, Leela, I see the big screen with, I guess that's a slide. And it is overlaid over the um, browser interface. Okay. What we seem to see is like a virtual machine that's running Windows 2003 or Windows XP that's over the University of Virginia Panopto web page. Right. Okay. I don't know what this user. This is a, kind of a funky slide. Let me let me close this one out and go back. So now you should see uh, the uva.hostedpanopto.com. It's it's slowly it's coming redrawing. So I think your virtual machine. I think you're running that right. Yeah. You want me and to switch over? Let me switch over to the Mac. It's it's really slowing things it's down. It's really slow down. Okay. Yeah. Make the Mac person the um, the presenter for me. Oh, okay. Give me one sec. Well, let's see if that speeds things up. All right, give me a second to get to that. All right. This is my first time with Big Blue Button, guys, so I apologize. No, that's fine. I just gave you your Mac presenter privileges. Okay, let's share this desktop. And okay, good. Is that any better, guys? We don't see anything yet. Okay. Ah, there it is. Oh, now it's gone. All right, I'm still, anything yet? 
It was there for one second and disappeared. Still, still missing. Okay. Well, that's interesting because try it again. Maybe I clicked something inadvertently. There we go. There we go. How yep. about that? That's Is good. That better? Yeah. Okay. So um, let me go back into the. So is that refreshing faster now? Yeah, it seems to be faster. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely, we're able to follow your mouse. Things seem to be responding a lot quicker. Okay. Um, so here's another example of, um, A chemistry class. I don't see it yet. Yeah, I don't either, so that's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Almost. There we go. How about this psychology class? Everybody got the big blue car yet? Mm-hmm. Okay, this, this professor doesn't use a camera. So you see this area in the far left is black. Right. And um, which is fine because you can just um, double click on this area right here, the, the actual screen, and it will, um, it will go full screen, which it's not doing. Okay, well, let me go back to how we actually get to using Panopto. Okay. Um, because I think there are multiple multiple uh, examples on the web of uh, some good um, actual presentations. These are just some I, I dragged up out of nowhere. Um, our version of Panopto is integrated into Sakai so that all of the access um is through through uh our sakai uh in, which we call collab and um i'll just walk through walk through this real quick uh sakai is an lti tool in the uh i mean panopto is an lti tool in the um toolbox in your in your installation and um, what happens with that is the user logins and the folders in the Panopto uh, unit itself are created <clears throat> by by uh, adding this tool so we don't have any user management issues at all which is wonderful when we were hosted um, before they ever came out with the Panop, uh, Sakai integration, we had to manage all our users and folders, and that was a little more a little more painful for everybody. Um, I apologize for this. I don't think I was quite ready. I think I wasn't familiar with the tool at all, or exactly what what was going on, but. I hope you will have some grace and patience with me. Of course. I would love to know, would love to know if anybody has any questions. That, well, um, I, we've, we've got, so while you're doing that, we've gotten a few comments. So um, Linda Beth, Linda Beth, I'm not sure where you are, um, but you, you guys are using Panopto since 2010. Oh, Roger Williams. Thank you, Linda. Sorry, Linda Beth. And uh, you were self-hosted until this year. You have a single sign-on from Sakai, and that's what we have too. And um, you are making the tool av available in everyone's my workspace as well as core templates. Um, and uh, you can also download recordings as MP4s or podcasts um, as MP3 simultaneously with the re rendering. So that's that's really great. 
Um, and Linda Beth also mentions that there are some great analytics that come with it. Maybe Linda Beth should show us her. <laughs> yes, there are great analytics. Um, so, and hold on, Jennifer has a question about webcams and wondering what type of cameras do you use? Um, okay, for camera for the hardware, we use a lot of different. Um, Different things in our in our classrooms themselves, we have the Vadio cameras that are USB, and um, they work really well. They're they're rather expensive, um, and I'm always looking for better hardware that has a little little better uh, cost. Um, the um, you can also use any kind of webcam. Um, you can use, you know, the camera on your on your notebook. A lot of one of the really cool things about Panopto is that the license is allows for anybody to load it on any device they want, and and create uh, recordings. It has a a um, an iOS client and an Android client, and um, so I can actually make a recording on my iPhone or my Android tablet. Uh, so if you have your students that want to go out in the field and do little vignettes or somewhere outside, it's not a big deal. Um, the, by default, the teacher of the course is the only one who can record the teacher and the secondary instructor or the administrator of your Sakai um, group that's not a class. And um, but but that you can get a, uh, around that if you want your students to record, you you add. Um, a folder, a subfolder to your folder, and it's called a Dropbox. And um, you can uh, then they can record directly into there. And the Dropbox is just like another your other kind of Dropboxes. The only people who can see what the student has put in there is the instructor and that student, the student who made the recording. But you can open that up to the to the rest of the class. And we've had some classes do that. We've had classes that have actually. Um, had the students do recordings and then open them up for peer review, and that has been uh, well received. Um, Lila, maybe you could walk us through, um, you know, going to a site in Collab and yes, uh, start, you know, just accessing the tool and um, and how and just you know what that part looks like for those who don't already know. And uh, Dave Evelyn wondered if this is an integration, an LTI integration. Yes, it is, Dave. Um, so, so if I go to the if I go to the site info and I go to edit the tools, can you see this? Mm -hmm. And then I click on on Panopto. What that does is um, it creates through the LTI interface. It creates a username. Uh, based on collab username, and uh, then the password is this, you know to pass through uh, LTI single sign on, and then um, so this is how you oh my gosh so this is <laughs> how you um, you create the site and then um, and that automatically creates the site it, it, in it creates Panopto. this folder the Panopto 4.7 test site folder it creates the folder and it creates the permissions in the folder based on um, your collab roles your collab users mm -hmm. so if I go back here to my users um, if I look at my participants I don't have any but me no uh, it was on the first screen you were on if you just click the cancel person. there. Okay. Well, that was just the ad users. Hang on. <clears throat> yeah. There we go. So, so there are your users on that screen. Oh, right here. Right mm -hmm. here are my users. Mm -hmm. uh, but these, these would be your classmates or whatever, your class roster. Students, yeah. Or your students. Mm -hmm. So uh, then the student, if you made a recording, it would automatically be in this folder, and all of these students would automatically have access to it. So that's how it works. Um, I think you have it. I already have it. I already have it running right here. So these are all 
test recordings that we did while we were testing machines into this site, and none of them are very uh, spectacular, so there's nothing magical about this. But if you wanted to see statistics on these, there's this little uh, graph, folder stats, and apparently it won't let me do them. There we go. And this one hasn't really done anything. So let's go back to all sessions and we'll... Um, all sessions means all of the courses that you have yeah. access to? Correct. Okay. Correct. And um, who am I logged in here? Yeah, let me, let me sign out and log back in as an administrator. So, so instructors wouldn't have this administrator access. The, the instructors can see their own site. Yeah. They can see their own sites, but they can't okay. see like everybody's sites. But that was done so long ago, I didn't have any graphs. So oh, here's, okay. here are the statistics. Can you see those now? Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is the past month. These are the, um, the actual people who have viewed, how many views we've had, the recordings, the unique users, and here are here are um, folder by folder statistics. You can even go down to um, you, you. That was folder by folder, but you could even go down to uh, an actual class. So if you did a recording on structure and vaccines here, February seventeenth, you can see even by the student's name how many times they looked at it and how long they looked at it. Um, so it has some very, very, very nice statistics as far as, as that goes. Uh, mm -hmm. You can do a custom range. So I have to report every month how many recordings and all that we've done. So I just changed these dates to custom ranges for, you know, to one. Yeah. To 229. You know, just like every, um, and then that'll change to show me what has happened in that last, in that last month. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to uh, pause right here, Leela. I see some conversation going on in the chat, and I just want to, for yeah. the benefit of the recording, they're not necessarily questions, but some comments are going on for people who are familiar with Panopto. So, um, first of all, Jill at Oxford um, posted a link um, with details on recommended equipment, and okay. uh, mm -hmm. and they're hosting that link. But I'm sure Panopto has their the same. They list. have a recommended. They have some equipment mm -hmm. as well. But almost any almost any web camera or uh, USB camera that will display in the computer will work. Okay. Uh, and then we're talking, uh, a couple of folks are talking about um, embedding an opto video in one of the other tools in Sakai, the lessons tool specifically, um, and discussing that in order to do that, the permissions for the video have to be adjusted to be public um, so that um, it can be viewed through another tool in Sakai. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how that works at all. So right. Probably. Yeah, and then let's see, Jennifer has a question. Can you see per student where they stopped or started in the video within their time watched? Is there any statistics on that, Leela, that you know of? I think you can. Um, let me see. You can get really ingrained on, on the places where they pause because that could be helpful to see possibly um right. it might reveal something about what questions were or were not answered um possibly i'm looking for um something with some statistics Whoops. Yeah, something with some statistics that I can yeah. look at real quick. Yeah. Um, so let's see what it tells us at the student. Um, I 
it looks like you can determine from this graph right here um, It looks like here this video but view by video's time, uh, you can determine how many people looked at certain areas of the video, but not necessarily per student where they stopped mm -hmm. and looked. Gotcha. If you can do that, um, I'm not okay. sure. Yeah. I'm not sure how. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe not. I know we have um, one of the really in incredible things about this company is their support structure. Um, they have been one of the best companies I've ever worked with for support. They uh, have an amazing support page, and I'll pop us out to that real quick. Uh, and they they do a much better job than I have done today um, showing how to use their tool and everything. Um, yeah, they have a lot of videos. Search for uh, video editing. And they have lots and lots of things. They also have uh, videos of how to do the video editing. Um, so if we go back to the documentation, we can look at uh, statistics. User sent the feature. Let's see. So you can apparently look at user centric statistics. Um, okay. And it shows you what you can what's available and how you can get to it right i don't see where they have uh you can see the i don't see where it tells you exactly what part of the video it does so i haven't i don't mm -hmm. see that yet but take a look at mm -hmm. support.panopto.com uh they have some amazing uh support pages and even the very simple just how to do a basic recording um this is the the Mac recorder. Can you see that? Mm-hmm. Okay, and to create a new recording, you just start the recorder right here. You can tell it where where to go, which um, I have to log in. I'm not logged in right now um, to, through through the That's recorder. Fine. But but when you're in the tool and you come in through the tool and hit make create a recording, it's all, it automatically does that. So if I were okay. in the tool it just and I would say in. create, record a new session, um, then it would bring that tool up and have me already uh, in this folder. So everything would go in this folder. Okay. Um, you can upload different kinds of media and use this as your media distribution, sort of like Kaltura. It will also do a webcast. Uh, it's about a three-minute delay with a hosted session. But if you're, you know, with a webcast, it's not necessarily uh, the best webcast tool, but it will do a webcast. Mm -hmm. um, another option that this has um, that we've had a little bit of issue with because of hardware, but is the scheduled recording. So uh, if you load the remote recorder on a PC and schedule the recordings, you could schedule, you could record all of the classes for this semester without the teacher really having to do, any, to do anything but log into the computer. So a lot of our engineering school has done this. They've, they've used this as a, as a tool to uh, record all of their things. What happens mm -hmm. with the schedule recording on the PC, um, the USB devices tend to capture them for themselves only. So the camera fights with any other program that wants to use it. So if, you schedule, if, you, if you're not using something like um, split cam or mini cam, and you just have the single camera attachment to the machine through the USB device, then once the remote recorder grabs the camera, you can no longer use it with anything else. You have to um, turn that off, stop the, um, stop the sessions, and, um, and then you can use it. But mm -hmm. we were having a lot of trouble, so we don't, we don't actually use that very much anymore because of the way our users uh, like to use Skype and if the remote recorder were on the machine, then the Skype would not have a camera. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. There are some comments in the, oh, did you want to finish going through that menu? Oh. Sorry. You don't have okay. to. 
I mean, build a session, it just means you can, you know, uh, it's it's an editing tool, but I've mm -hmm. never actually used this. Um, and then you can create a new folder. So if we create a new folder right here, um, it would just create a subfolder for you, for you. Okay. Okay. Cool. There's some comments here in the chat I want to capture in the recording that we're doing. Okay. So, um, Pete Robinson at Oxford um, says, thanks for talking about Panopto. We had a similar journey to you in that we were looking for something that didn't rely too heavily on a big, expensive hardware rollout. And we're running it as a cloud service rather than on, an, on a local service server. It was painless and quick to integrate via LDI with Sakai. Also, I agree, support with Panopto has been excellent. And Fawe um, adds that they encourage instructors to make use of the lessons tool to add learning activities and resources on one page. Thus, um, currently students have to click on the Panopto link to see all videos. Okay, so that's just a discussion around using the lessons tool and the desire to embed Panopto okay. videos. Is, is it Fawai? Is that how you say it? Uh huh. Um, have you tried just embedding the um, actual URLs to the to the things inside the tool in Lesson Builder? I've never used Lesson Builder, so I can't. I can't address that, but if they're logged into Collab and you put in the actual uh, URL to the to the session, I believe just by virtue of being logged into Collab, they should be able to see that without opening the tool. Mm -hmm. uh, but I haven't tried that. Well, that's an interesting suggestion, so we'll have to look at that. Um, Jennifer says, as an administrator, can you view or work with all the videos of instructors as a central repository? So if a faculty member leaves their videos. Yes, that, as, you, as the main administrator, I have, I have okay. God power, yes. Okay, and they're still available to you and you can manage them. Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent. And Linda, Linda, responded to Fawe that um, she agrees that it's very clear to students which video to watch if embedded within lessons. However, the trick is that the instructor has to make sure the permissions are set correctly so that students are not prompted to log in a second time. So, so that's helpful to know, Linda. Thank you. Um, any other questions for Leela or any el anyone else on the call who's familiar with Panopto? All right, Hi, Linda, Linda, thanks. We'll see you. So I'll be happy to, to go over this one-on-one -on -one with anybody. I'm sorry for the sort of lackluster experience that you've had. <laughs> don't don't blame Tricia. It's all my fault. No, <laughs> I, I should so have much. started um, working with this tool a lot sooner. I had a lot of uh, actual problem with my computer, and I could have had a, a much I would have had a much better thing going. But you did fine, Leela. Thank you please. so much. Please, please, please check out their support page. If you're interested at all in the product, their support page is uh, phenomenal. It's very, very easy to use. The, um, the hardest thing we've had to deal with really is keeping the hardware running, so keeping the cameras connected properly with, uh, you know, and that's because we run uh, computers in our classrooms that we have it connected to. But, but if an instructor wants to use this at their desktop or with their laptop or their iPad, there's, you don't have any of those problems. Our problems really are because we have a, a multi-use computer in each classroom. And so gotcha. as far as the tool goes, it's wonderful. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you very much, Leela. This, this was really um, very interesting and informative and Panopto is a really cool tool as Matt Burgess commented. And uh, I think lots of folks are using it successfully, it sounds like, and uh, so yeah. Um, Leela, can you chat your email address if you if you don't mind uh, folks reaching out to you if they have more questions? I am doing it now. All right.
right. Oh, I didn't see it. Um, there you go. Oh, there it is. Okay. Thank you. Leela at virginia.edu. Perfect. And okay, congrats I'm again on your new grandbaby. <laughs> very Thank exciting. You, mm -hmm. All right. Take care, Len. I'm going to, um, uh, you can go ahead and stop um, turn me, sharing. Turn me off. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Go. All right. Um, so, uh, what we have next is um, to discuss future meeting topics. And I know Matt Burgess in our last meeting um, did some conversation around that. Um, Neil, I hear you on the line. Do you want to bring anything up? Um, yeah, there was a while ago, there was Wake Forest. Somebody brought this up to me offline on email that uh, a while ago, Wake Forest was going to present on their uh, integration of photos into Sakai. Yeah. And I think that got, we got somehow that was, it didn't happen. And I don't remember if I, I think I reached out to them and they said they'd be happy to be rescheduled. But honestly, I don't remember. It's been a while. Um, so you, that might be one. Do you know who the right contact is? Um, there are several people there that I know. Uh, uh, Drew Wills and Stephen, um, what's his last, Wicker. Uh, let's see. Are any are any Wake Forest people on the call right now? I guess not. Neil, this is Adam. Since I'd expressed an interest in this, uh, I actually dropped an email to the two people who were scheduled to present in January. Uh, just sent it yesterday. Have not heard back and don't know necessarily that they're the appropriate people. But you know, more communication is likely better. Yeah. So why don't you why, why don't we see Adam if they respond to you and and if you don't get a response, I'll maybe ping somebody over there. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. So yeah, we do need to get that rescheduled. And um, Matt Burgess, um, you mentioned that um, I don't think Louisa. Lee is on the call today, but that she had offered to present on um, the LEAP project in the in one of our upcoming meetings. Maybe you could reach out to her directly and um, see what dates are going to work best for her, and um, and then we can update the schedule for that. Sure. I'm happy to do that. I know that when we talked initially, at least at that time, she thought that she had a date at the end of March open and also a date at the beginning of April. So if we wanted to meet um, in two weeks or if we wanted to meet again the first Wednesday in April, hopefully those will work for her. So I will reach out to her today. So, yeah, just for, for any of you who um, may not have been on the last call, Matt um, suggested that um, since there are five weeks in March, we might want to have a meeting on that fifth week since now we're only meeting on the first and third weeks, but we had this fifth week coming along that we might want to use that for a teaching and learning call. And uh, so that's that's what he's referring to the the last week in March or the first week. We'll still have the first week in April as well, but um, Anyway, so Matt, I'll let you work on that and the schedule for the 30th. Um, and we had some other people on the call last week or the last time um, when we uh, had Saul Khan and Grace from Texas State talking about marketing and some people were interested in um, continuing that conversation. So that's a possibility. Um, and we have a list of unscheduled topics. So um, Matt will reach out to Lisa on the LEAP project. And um, does anybody have any, are anybody wanting to volunteer? We've got, so Matt, I'm going to leave April, the uh, March 30th and April 6th dates open for now while you're coordinating with Louisa because we don't okay. want to book those on top of that. 
just in case. That, but That sounds great. Um, also, I will probably send some mail to the TNL list, but if anybody who's on the call has strong feelings one way or the other about having a meeting on the fifth Wednesday, that was just a suggestion that I threw out there. If people have strong feelings about that one way or the other, if you really think you'd like to have a meeting, that we've got some topics that you're interested in, or if you really think that you'd like to have that time to work on other projects as we get close to the end of the semester here in the U.S., you know, uh, please let us know in the chat or uh, send me mail directly because uh, I'll probably send out mail to the list just asking for feedback before we decide for sure if we want to have a meeting on the 30th. So, Matt, maybe another way to do that is to send an email to the list for the TNL call uh, suggesting a meeting on the 30th and seeing what kind of response you get back. Okay, sounds great. So yeah, Terry, we are getting a backlog of topics and I agree, we do have a backlog. And so what it really comes down to is finding people to do these presentations and you know, finding a time for them. So we need volunteers to step up and um, take on these topics. Um, so we did vote recently on some of the topics and I'm switching over to the um, Confluence page. I'm gonna paste that into the chat in case you guys wanna go take a quick look, scroll down to near the bottom on the left. So we did the Texas State Marketing. We've got the Lessons Enhancement um, Project Phase Two update and hopefully um, we'll get that scheduled soon with Louisa. Matt will work on that. Migrating from Sakai 10 to 11, that will probably have to wait until some folks actually do that <laughs> a little later um, in the spring or early summer. Um, the documentation group, I mean, that could just be an update. The open badges, we've got several things that we voted on, and we still have um some other things listed in the unscheduled topics um so you know i don't know uh does anybody have any topics that they feel strongly that they want to hear about soon or would volunteer to actually present on Okay, so um, I'm not getting any response from folks and it is the top of the hour, so we'll just have to revisit that. And um, uh, Matt Burgess will communicate about the March 30th meeting and um, topics for that if, if that gets scheduled. So um, thanks everybody. And if there are no more questions or comments or if there are, please chime in. All right, so we'll see you soon. Okay, bye.